What's up, you guys? This is the Big PP swinging in full effect. And I'm Darrell. And I'm Gabriel. And this is the Plastro Podcast. So this is going to be uh, episode two of our uh, joint, uh, I guess, podcast together. I did a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a movie review, and I'll get to those later. I also have um, the Pokemon Detective Pokemon that I saw a couple days ago, and then uh, John Wick Three, which I saw yesterday, which was uh, I'm going to save it. For, uh, for later on, but it was badass. Um, we have some topics we're going to talk about. I'll let my brother uh, get started. So yeah, today's episode is going to be, uh, first and foremost, we're going to be covering the Canelo Jacobs fight and a few of the other previous fights. You know, we're both um, Mexican-Americans, and so obviously we're big fans of Canelo. But uh, we try to not be biased in our um, in our judgment of, you know, the fight. and Even though we put them hands on him. Yeah, got them hands. Yeah, but um, just so, leading, leading up to that fight, uh, you go back to um, GSP and or I'm sorry, I'm thinking, I'm thinking <laughs> sport. Stuff, um, sport. Triple G, Triple and G Canelo, one, yeah, and two. That fight uh, it just led up to so much good boxing going on right now. Um, the the first fight, obviously, well, I don't want to say obviously because it was a tie, but I think Triple G should have won. It was obvious Triple G um, should have won that, that and fight. Then, uh, and we're, you know, like I said, we're Canelo fans, but yeah. that, that first fight, Triple G won. It should not have been a tie. And that, that Hispanic chick that, that put Canelo in favor, put him in favor, like, way over the top. Like, it was, it was obvious it was a close fight, and she scored the fight in his favor. You know, uh, whether they were, you know, sliding a little the chips. Second, the second <laughs> I don't fight, know. Uh, the, the, the rematch was uh, a little more equal. I actually think that Canelo did better. On yeah, that I, one, thought, I thought the second uh, fight was Which brings well. it to the, the current Canelo. fight with Jacobs. Um, now, I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't see the full fight. I saw the highlights because I was I did watch the full fight, though. Um, so, from what I saw from the highlights, um, Jacobs, he just didn't use his distance. Um I think Canelo got off the shots, and he's just showed that he's a much more mature fighter. Uh, he he took his patience, and he just did it the way, and he fought the way that he wanted to fight. So, um, what do you what are your thoughts? Uh, I thought that he so definitely should have. Yeah, I actually watched the full fight, and I thought that he definitely um, should have opened up by using that reach a lot more, using that jab to keep that distance. You didn't really see too much of that. You saw Canelo getting in tight, getting in close. You know what I mean? Weaving and slipping, getting really yeah. loose, especially towards the, the sixth, the, the sixth and seventh round. Like he's really just got loose, and you can't let him get in that rhythm because once those professional boxers that are, you know, these are these are not amateurs. These people have been doing this their whole lives, you know, for years and years and years. Once they get into that rhythm where they can time your punches, yes, you're kind of fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean? It's like you're you're kind of screwed. You know, um, you can't let them get in like that, especially like. You know, Jacobs, he had the advantage. You know, he's got the reach. He's got this bigger size advantage. Like, and he, I just felt like he didn't use it. He didn't really have too much snap to his punches. Um, Canelo always obviously has snap to his punches and always has incredible uh, bob and weave game and, and just was really good at slipping those those punches, especially that underneath uh, to the left side. He's really good at it. Uh, and, and, you know, like, I think we all, you know, can agree, the people who at least saw the fight, you know, there was no... Um, no hard judgment in that one. It was pretty uh, black and white. Yeah, it's pretty decisive. There's actually, it's just a real good time for sports right now, man. The uh, the NBA finals are going on, you know, yeah. uh, a couple of days ago. The the Kawhi, uh, I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, that Kawhi, uh, shot. Kawhi shot. Yeah, and then oh, the corner. It was nasty, man. It was, it was uh, great. Kawhi um, in the 76ers, or it was uh, Toronto in the 76ers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then, um, was it Lillard? Lillard, yeah. Yeah, he made that uh, the game-winning shot, too, with yeah, that three. Yeah, buzzer beaters. Man, it's just a great time for sports, man, and I can't wait to to watch the playoff set. I know the Warriors are going to be in, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, uh, I'm a Lakers fan, so I'm not too excited about it. But yeah, you know. I mean, it, it they're like, you know, they're just a super team right now, and as long as they have, you know, the team that they have right now, I think they're gonna, they're just gonna be so hard to beat. It's just you know they're going to be in the playoffs automatically. It's just what it is. And yeah, then, but I mean, there's good teams too. You know, what yeah. I mean, that are that are also going to be in the finals. I'm not. Uh, thinking it's going to be all completely one-sided, and, you know you got you got a lot of good talent. Um, that shot, man, you could see the emotion on Kawhi. You could see that whole place just blew up as yeah, soon as. It's and you, to watch live. The, yeah, the 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 biggest suspense was the fact that you know you see that 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 one bounce, two bounce, three bounce. Yeah. And everybody's looking at it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! 
<laughs> I, you know, everybody goes crazy. I like I like those moments in sports. Speaking of uh, Golden State Warriors, I just wanted <laughs> I saw the stuff going on about the Aisha Curry, her talking about that oh, she yeah. wants attention from her, uh, some from other people instead of her husband to make her feel secure. I just that's weird, dude. Why would yeah, you go I mean on it's TV a little weird. It's a little weird, but I mean she's just being herself and just being honest, like. If to to her, she's a little bit more heavier set, you know what I mean. She's on the bigger side, and then Curry, he's you know he's a super athlete, he's a superstar. So I mean, he's like she even said on the and and the you know talk with uh was it it was Jada Pinkett uh, Smith that that um she struggled with that as well. Like you know their their husbands are like super super famous people, and they're they're you know getting attention and women just throwing themselves at them. So I could I could on one hand I could kind of understand it, but. At the same time, you, you don't really want to be saying stuff like that on you know, See, TV. This, is, this like, is the problem that I have. Um, I think that you shouldn't be looking for attention from anyone else. Anyone else spouse, besides, yeah, besides who you're with. And you shouldn't need other people to, for you to have uh, self-confidence. I, knew, yeah. I mean, everybody has their problems there, uh, with the way they, they see themselves and their image and everything. But I think that, that self-confidence comes from within. It doesn't come from yeah. you know, the exterior. It, it shouldn't come from other places and to yourself. Thing, what do you, uh, guys that know you're married to be sliding in your DMs, especially when your husband's in the playoff messing with his game like that. This is not the yeah. time to be messing with. Ain't nobody gonna be messing with his game. <laughs> that with three Curry unlock. On this. That three unlock. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just, I just thought it was really weird. I saw it was, it was going around the Instagrams and uh, thought I'd bring it up. It's just, I, I, I don't know. That was just it's a strange, strange thing. Um, I think we should move on to music, man. Uh, there's a lot of good music coming out. We got a couple albums we want to go over. The first one uh, I just listened to today was the the Igor album from uh, Tyler yeah. the Creator. Yeah. You know, this is uh, coming from a couple of the previous albums. I thought, uh, you know, his style was starting to evolve, starting to change in a certain direction. You know, a little bit more Frank Ocean esque, a little yeah. bit more Chance the Rapper ish, especially on the beats. You can tell, like Flower Boy, for example, was a lot like Igor. I thought, like um, a lot of the the songs, you know, A Boy Is a Gun, I liked Puppet, I liked Earthquake. I liked but I thought that they had like that same kind of vibe same kind of feel of not so much lyricism you know more just beats and your mood with that vibe that's you know on that wavelength and just trying to you know you can kind of feel his energy feel like where he's at the positivity you know you can kind of feel like that that art artistry yeah very artsy yeah very artsy that artistry wrapped in but it's not so much as like a cohesive song like a lot of the songs were broken up i felt they were they weren't they weren't cohesive in the sense of like one song one beat you know one flow it was like let me let me start this beat real hard and then let me change it up and and get all soft like i don't know i didn't like that it kept mixing up like that you know a lot of i don't like when albums tend to do that um the childish gambino album um which one the last one that came out, I, I'm blanking on the um, on the name for it, but he he did uh, real good with making different kind of sounds, of uh, kind of merged together where it'd go kind of low and soft tone, and then he'd bring it to a, an eleven. Um, and not that I didn't like uh, Tyler Creator's album, uh, I thought it was really really vibey, and um, I, I've never been like a super fan of. Uh, what is that? Uh, Our future. Um, Our future. Wolf yeah. Game. Kill them all. And, and uh, Tyler's creator, I think that he has uh, some good song, <laughs> some good songs out there, man. But uh, I, he's a little too weird for me, man. Um, nah, he's right on my alley. I love it. Nah, he's just a little. Uh, I, I can see what he was going for, and it's a really good vibey album. But I don't think I'd be listening to him more than like. Yeah, I don't know if I listen to that album a lot. Like, yeah. I don't, I listen to a couple of songs and I definitely you know yeah, put them in my playlist. I'll put it on the playlist. Yeah, I'll put like probably three, four songs on the playlist out of that whole album. Though, you know, what I mean, that goes to show you it's like a lot of, like the uh, uh, was it Astro World? Like Astro World, half of it I felt was awesome and they were bangers and like they just really vibed and were super catchy. And then the other half of the album I thought was just mumble you know trash like i just thought it was really really bad quality music like that same you know kind of migos-esque you know and not not to hate on migos or anything like that because i like a lot of their songs but i thought it was in that same category of just you know repetitive redundant like, uh, you know i don't want to i don't want to listen to that all day 
Uh, so moving on from the Igor album, we're gonna get into uh, Logic. Yeah, Logic. Yeah, yeah. The, the new Logic album. Um, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Yeah. Uh, obviously, most of you probably heard the uh, the homicide with him and Eminem, which was unbelievable. It was a banger. Um, that one's definitely on the playlist. And then um, Keanu Reeves. That one was dope. That was really good. Um, there was. Which one was. The one Homicide with and Still Ballin' I like too. Yeah. Um, the one with Will Smith. Ooh, I forgot the name of that one. No, but. but it, it was, was good. Yeah, was that good. one was good. I'm, I don't remember. Last time <laughs> was <laughs> so on, on a song, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was good hearing it. Was, like, immediately when I heard. You the recognize voice that there. voice, that yeah. You recognize that. Like, oh, you know, this is a story you know, all about how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we grew up on uh, Fresh Prince, so yeah, you know, that was that was great. Just to throw get that, that throwback. It wasn't that, yeah, it wasn't all, necessary. To throw that in there, but it, I'm so glad he did, and just yeah. made, made the album just a little give a little give a little flavor. Yeah, a little flavor. S- uh, I also <laughs> like that uh, logic on the "Don't Be Afraid to Be Different" um, song. I believe that was it, um, or maybe. No, 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 that was a Will Smith song, the Don't Be Afraid to Be Different. But there was one song on the album, I think towards the end of the album, uh, it was either the second to last or the last song. Uh, he gave a shout out to Sister Nancy on uh, Bomb Bomb. Uh, that was Bobby. For, it was Bobby? Yeah. Yeah, so I, was, yeah, I think Bobby. it was the last song, it was called Bobby. And uh, he gave a little remix um, to her to her song, Bomb Bomb. And that's, you know, a timeless classic. And uh, every time you hear that, you know, you recognize it. I learned that song from, I think, like the game Skate back in the day. I'm going to used to play it and, you know, you know all the skaters and all the people out there that you know the sidekick phone, the the sidekick yeah, phone yeah, you know yeah. they all they all recognize that song because you know everybody played that game for hours when it first came out and so you know shout out to him for uh for doing that little uh remix i enjoyed that song was all right but uh yeah. i enjoyed that little a little uh call out yeah and then um i know you haven't heard it but the the joiner song the new one that he uh has a lot of controversy over Again, I'm blanking on the names. Uh, I, I apologize for this. I didn't bring my note, my notepad. Um, but uh, I think you guys should listen to it. It was uh, very obviously it's controversial because he's saying, um, "Why did all these people die?" Like, <clears throat> like Nipsey Hussle and Easy E and Tupac and Notorious B.I.G. But we got people like Trump and uh, the, the I think it was the Parkland shooter still alive. The Parkland, yeah. And um, I think he took shots at a Fox or CNN uh, reporter and stuff like that. He was just like, these, all these good people who made a difference, you know, to the rap community, to the world, whatever. And then, you know, all these scumbag people are, uh, are still alive. I think yeah, that was really bold, but... Um, I think that's also not a black and white situation. It's pretty gray because those people I mean, I that... I those song. No, no, not good. the song, but I'm talking about yeah. when you're talking about those, those figures uh, in society that, you know, passed away. Like, they, they also, you know, th- yes, in one hand, they inspired tons of people and... Um, there wouldn't be a they're, Kendrick they're, they're, Yeah, there wouldn't be... Pac, well, I don't know if that's necessarily true either. There wouldn't be a Kendrick without Pac. Mm-hmm. He's still talented as fuck, and he Put still would have. Put in the comments. Do you still, think that there would be a Kendrick Lamar without Tupac? There's still Dre. There's still people that to to build him up. I mean, and, and obviously it's Kendrick Lamar. He does not need help making I'm a name for he himself. Help, but there still would have been Kendrick Lamar. He still would have been born. That one man had. That's like. He still would have been born. He still would have been Kendrick. Like I don't. I don't see how you think that. That's anyway, right, so right, it, it changed it back to back yeah. to the subject that I was talking about was that, um, that like I said, I don't think that's a great situation. Like, yes, they were they were great influential figures and they you know, they represent a lot of good things, but they also represent a lot of bad, just like all humans. You know, we're oh, not yeah. we're not, you know, perfect creatures. They also did ton, ton of bad things, you know, in their lives. And, um, you know, stuff comes around and, you know, maybe that's not maybe that's why they're not here. You know, who knows? But yeah. Yeah, and that's a very we're saying that as a general statement. We're not saying that Tupac deserves to die. No, absolutely not. not you know, not what we're saying. You know, we love Pac. We're, we're from you know all, all of our families from California and LA, so I don't even have to say anything about that. But we we grew up on Pac. But so that's gonna be the end of this video, guys. Uh, thank you for staying tuned to the very end, and um, we'll catch you on our next one. Uh, is there anything you wanna add? Peace, pot, and microdot. <laughs> all right, man. Peace.